Today we will study Kumo no Kasai no Bungaku or Kumo Gasai no Bungaku. Kumo comes from cloud and Gasai or Kasai comes from um, something like a fire, uh, a destructive fire. So Kumo no Kasai no Bungaku is a Gungaku that has two lines of explanations. First of all, before getting into that, let us remind that Gungaku are the, the military studies or the military um, uh, arts that can be used before a situation comes as a preparation. However, we just uh, saw that in the previous video on the Gungaku series. But now let's take a moment to understand a bit more deeply what Kungaku talks about. Kungaku talks about any preparation that can be made prior to any situation, however, uh, concerning something that will be used when a situation has already arrived, when a situation already is happening. We cannot confuse Kungaku with Senryaku with Heiho. About the warfare, we have to consider the senryaku, that is, uh, that are the preparations before the war, the, the planning part, the planning stage, um, the planning of the campaigns, the, the gathering of information, the intel, the geography, uh, the cartography, and uh, well, there are many parts involved in the senryaku that um, regards how to move your troops, how to position your men, how to move, um, what dates, what times. There are a series of studies in Senryaku. But they are all concerned, um, and they all relate to the planning ahead of the war. And we have Boryaku. Boryaku is the deceive is the use of the information, the good and the bad, so we can deceive the enemy, but always uh, concerning information at some level. And then we have Bungaku, that is what we are studying right now. And uh, let's proceed then with the Kumo Gasai. So Kumo Gasai no Bungaku is nothing more than using a sensu, this is a sensu, it was part of the Japanese clothes at that time, especially during summer. In this Gungaku, the idea was that uh, the Shizen people would use the, the shape of the Sensu. You can see this is not Enogi, that is that smaller fan, and also not a Tesen, that is that uh, the war fan made of iron or bronze or, well, a different kind of fan. This was, this is a sensu, it would be used for um, for dancing, during some dances. Uh, and uh, as as we have seen, it, it was part of the Japanese clothes. So you see, it has very uh, defined, well-set valleys, you know. You can see that uh, once it is opened like this, it is not quite straight, it keeps its shape, even when opened. Uh, in this case, this sensu has uh, this structure made of wood, so it is actually rigid and keeps its form. So what we do is, we prepare ahead a composition, a set of powders, and we use these valleys to store this powder. This powder, as you can see, uh, had four key components, ingredients. It was mainly composed of salt, sulfur, pepper, and wasabi. Uh, it has the proper way of doing, of mixing, and the proper um, amount of each of those ingredients. But these are the main ingredients for this powder. So. Um, after having this quite mixed 
and uh, we have a fine powder here. What they would do is they would use this sensu and these valleys for storing. However, let's see, there are two versions for this gungaku. One of them uses the sensu, the other version of this gungaku in our school is thought as that they would they would hide this prepared powder inside these leaves of the yogata that was also part of the Japanese clothes. They had a kind of a, a pocket inside these leaves of the yogata so they, they could hold it inside. It wouldn't fall. Okay. Um, and so we have these two versions in our school. If we follow the first version, what we are going to do is we're going to use, to use the the valley is going to spread this powder around here, okay, and carefully close it. So you see, it remains stored in here. So you see, once it is set, it won't, I can turn it upside down, I can do this, I can do this, and it stays well kept, well stored. It is worth saying that in this case the sensu would be a shikomibuki. Shikomibuki were um, deceiving weapons, you know, misleading weapons. And what does this mean? For example, in this case of a sensu with a hidden powder in here, it is also worth noting that the kind of pepper they, they used for that, as we are taught today, was that Chinese big pepper. Um, so the idea is that using all these elements, all these ingredients, these hot ingredients, it would be, uh, let's say, hot to the eye. It would cause a great deal of irritation to the eyes, and so he would have time to, to run away or he would have um, an element of surprise in this case. Well, there are two types of shikomibuki. One of them is that uh, it was a common object. Uh, however, there was maybe inside this object or disguised uh, some, somehow along this object and uh, there was a concealed weapon. For example, if I had a tanto or a blade or a kunai or a shokunai, a shuriken even, inside the, the sensu, I would have a concealed weapon inside a common object, you see? Uh, so, in places that weapons are not allowed, the shizen or the samurai or whoever uh, that was carrying this object, he could get uh, into that environment, into that room, into that place with this concealed weapon. So, for illustrating this case, this is another sensu that I have here, just like this, that we just saw. So, here it is, and here I have a shuriken. You may have seen many videos of this practice in our school. This is a bow shuriken, a cylindrical shuriken. So I could, for example, disguise this shuriken inside this sensu, for example, here. Okay, and I, I could proceed just as I did with the other sensu and close it. Okay, so as long as you are not seeing this view, it is a concealed weapon if I use it as regular, as usual. Uh, inside the OB, it is just a fan, it is just a sensu, it is part of my, of my clothes. However, it is actually a shikomibuki, or a concealed weapon. There is a second a type of shikomibuki, that is, uh, weapons, I mean, uh, objects that are already weapons. However, they would have some special feature, some hidden feature with it. 
So let's suppose I am carrying uh, Joe, uh, Steph, and uh, this uh, is a weapon already. However, let's now imagine that inside it there is a hidden uh, tanto or a blade you know, or a, a spearhead, let's say. So we have a weapon or a special feature within that weapon hidden. And then the idea of this first explanation, this first version of the of this Ungako is that whenever a situation happened I could open my fan and then fan out or spread out this this powder, use the fan itself for for blowing. So this is I have no powder here. Once I opened it, spread it and then having time to run away or to, to plan my escape or to uh, make my escape easier or possible for any means. The second explanation is that they would carry this powder inside these leaves of the Yogata. It is actually a very fine powder, you can just see. It would be easily thrown off. So in this second explanation there are three possibilities for using this powder. After catching the powder inside these leaves there were three ways of using this powder. First one is called Odoroki, which means catching him by surprise. So suppose we are in a closed environment, okay? I will have some of the powder in my left hand. Here I am. Let's suppose I was here. So say, uh, in the case of Odoroki, I would turn my face, I would look to one side, and then use the, using the, the hand of the same side, but I mean uh, opposite directions. I'm looking towards my left, and so I am throwing the powder with my left hand as well to my right. So by throwing, I would have him not uh, quite aware of my hand. My hand would come from, from below and uh, my eyes would be, my sight, my eyes would be facing, would be looking towards the other, the other place, the other direction. The second form was called hensa, when I would have both my hands with powder and I would, uh, th I would throw it upwards. So I would make all that environment or say I would have a, a cloud of this powder uh, suspended in air. So here there are two uh, usages for that. One is that I was expecting that he as um, a skilled uh, for example, a uh, skilled Kenshi, a uh, skilled swordsman, or a skilled warrior, he would, uh, in a triangle shape, he would move in a Sankaku Sabaki. He would try to evade from this cloud and then try to reach me, uh, at which point I would be waiting for him, say, with a knife, with a tanto, a sword, or something. Or I would just create the conditions for me to run away. And the third form was called Togoku. That means to, um, to stop, to control him, but uh, in the sense, in the way that I would prevent him to, to enter, to come, to continue his movement towards me. So this would mean throwing the powder straight to his eyes. It is interesting to note that in this third form, the Togoku form, the eyes, I was aiming to the eye because it was the only exposed part of the body of the samurai. So say that uh, a samurai troop or a group of samurai uh, uh, broke in or invaded the village of the Shisen people, or one of the villages that we in which we were set, um, and caught us unguarded. So they would have to they would have to find mechanisms and means for running away or for running for their weapons and so on. So th this is one of this is the context which 
justifies the Gungaku aspect of it. That is something that was arranged first, that was planned ahead for a situation that was already happening. Okay? The only part of the part of the body of the samurai that was exposed was his eyes. So the idea was that this would prevent them to keep their movement and then would give us some time to run away. Yet, another scenario for this Kungaku was in the case that uh, uh, a Kenshi, a swordsman, realized during the combat that he wouldn't be able to, uh, to beat, to, de to defeat the other Kenshi because he was uh, a very skilled Kenshi. So he would have to, uh, to try a different resource. So what he would do uh, using this Gungaku is he would drop his sword, okay? He would open his arms and have the powder in his hands at this time already. As if he had given up. When the other got close to him and when the other was certain, he was sure that it was over, then uh, he would have uh, uh, the powder all over his face, all over his eye, as he was uh, um, getting close to him, approaching him. Okay? And there was also a second situation in this same scenario, that is, instead of dropping the sword and opening his arms, he would actually uh, go to Seiza, I mean, kneel down, and offer his sword for the other Kenshi. And as a strategical resource, he would have the powder on his hands by this time. Anthropologically speaking, it, uh, apart from the Kumoga Sai no Gungaku, which uh, happens, which exists as we have seen, they could also use uh, different powders, for example, iron powders or metal powders, leftovers from um, weaponry, from weapons, and so on. Uh, and they could use this mixed with other powders, they would actually give these powders to children and women in the case of uh, rapes, violations, or for cases in which a samurai could broke in villages and they had to, to find a less resource for running away. But uh, as we have this, um, these metal powders, it would be very harmful to the eye. It was not just something like pepper or something like wasabi that would uh, irritate the eye. He would lose his, his, his sight for some few moments and then he could wash this away. In this case, if he, if he took his hand to his eye, then uh, it could scratch his eye, it could make him blind. Uh, later on, we are also taught that when Ashizen saw that, he would say, hey, don't scratch, don't scratch your eye. And then he would clean that with oil and water first. What we have seen is that this Gungaku uses the element of surprise as uh, virtually almost any Gungaku. That's because the element of surprise uh, is a very important feature of almost every military situation. That is, in this case, we are using the element of surprise as a defensive mechanism, as a mechanism that will prevent your enemy to reach you any further and then giving you a better uh, condition of survival.